Good morning, Algebra 2, Trig Honor students. So today I just want to go over some of the problem that uh, we didn't finish during class time. So you guys can uh, watch this video and just check your work, uh, all the process, the way that I solve for those circle problems. Okay, so number 46 is all about the exponents. So let's take a look at that. And we went over the properties of the exponents, all seven of those. Product to sum, quotient to difference, power, power, etc. So now, according according to the problem here, so what we got, it's a negative x y to the power of 5 times the quantity of 2y x squared quantity squared. So first thing that you want to do, you want to distribute the power. So the power we have outside the parentheses is 2, so 2 to the second power, y squared, and then x to the power of 2 times 2, which is 4. And also everything else that you don't carry along, so make sure that you need to put it right next to it. So this one, negative x times y to the power of 5. So we need to put it right next to the, the parentheses. Okay, so what we got here, so it's negative x times x to the power of 4. So we do have negative x to the power of 5 because that's a product to sum. So we're using the first property, which is a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So that would be a to the power of m plus n. So the power is not shown, it's always 1, so it's 1 plus 4 is 5. And then the next one, it's y to the power of 5 times y to the power of 2nd. So it's y to the power of 7. And then 2 squared, that's just the coefficient, so which is what? 4. So for the coefficient, we always want to put in right in front of the variable. So it's going to be negative 4. So eventually, the answer is negative 4, x to the power of 5, y to the power of 7. And nothing we can simplify more, so that means we just leave the answer like that. And then for the rest of those problems, you can apply the property, the one that we talk about in class today, product to sum, quotient to difference, power, power, the zero exponent, the power distribution. And the next one I would like to talk about here is the way to combine the like terms. So any t anytime they want to combine the like term, you always want to find out the one with the same variable and also this one with the exact same degree. So... If you try to take out all the parentheses here, we do have 9 minus 4a to the power of 3, b to the power of 3. Negative, negative, we distribute the negative sign, so we got positive 6a cubed, b cubed. Negative, negative, so plus 14. And then negative, negative, plus 8. And then negative, negative, plus 6a cubed, b cubed. And then negative, positive, minus 2a. So now, the next thing that we want to do is to find out the one with the greatest degree, and then we can start to combine those like terms first. So let's just underline the one with the like term. So negative 4a to the power of 3, b to the power of 3. So we want to find out the one that with the exact same variable with the degree. So that would be 6a cubed, b cubed. So once you combine them, so that means you want to combine the coefficients. So then that would be 2a cubed, b cubed. And also this one is similar along with this one as well. So once you combine them, so that would be 6 plus 2. Then that would be 8, a cubed, b cubed. So again, whatever the like term that you see here, you want to combine those like terms. And now we left with uh, the variable, the singular variable, a to the first power. So 1a plus negative 2a. Then that would be considered negative 1a or negative a. And then the last things that you want to combine would be the constants. So 9 plus 14, then we'll end up with plus 23. Again, make sure that you need to show the consistency. So I need to put in the equal sign right here. And it looks like this one's going to be a trinomial. And here we go. And now 59, 59 basically we just want to FOIL. So the way to FOIL, it's about first, outside, inside, and last. So first, outside, inside, and then last. So negative 5p times 7p, then we do have negative 35p squared. So the number, we need to multiply the coefficients. And then for the power, we just need to combine the exponent. And then the next one would be the outside term. So we do have negative 5p times negative 5. Then that would be considered 25p. 
And then A times 7P, then we do have 56P. And then A times negative 5, then we do have negative 40. So combine them all together, we do have negative 35P squared. So 25P plus 56P, we do have 70, well, 81P. And then minus 40. So eventually we end up with a quadratic trinomial. Quadratic, that means the highest power is 2, or the highest degree is 2. Trinomial, that means it's three terms. And then the next one, 67. Uh, this one, I don't think I circled this problem during class, but the thing is that for those you are getting stuck with 67, 68. So this one is all about the uh, long division. You can do it with the long division. So that means the dividend is going to be that trinomial. So 10v to the power of 4 plus 30v to the power of 3 plus 2v squared. So it's a 4 degree trinomial. Divisor would be that monomial, 10v. But instead of doing this way, we can always separate it out into a trinomial. So we can always put in this structure. So we divide each term by 10v. And then from here, we can just using that, the properties of exponent, and then we can reduce. So 10 divided by 10, that's 1, v to the power of 4 over v to the power of 1, then that'll be v to the power of 3. And then 30 over 10, then that'll be 3. So v to the power of 3 over v to the power of 1, then that'll be v squared. And then 2 over 10, that'll be 1 fifth. And then v squared over v, then that'll be v. So it's a trinomial, but this one is called the third degree trinomial. All right, so now let's take a look at that. 73, 74, so according to the structure, uh, the instructions. So this one, it's all about factoring. So there are a couple of things that we can do for factoring, but always the first thing you want to do, you want to check the greatest common factor. So things that they share in common. So we do have 6, 53, 70. Uh, 53 looks like that one is a prime number, so I don't think there's any greatest common factor with all the coefficients. So what we can do here, we can always set up the structure. A lot of strategy for doing the factorings, a lot of people using like factoring by using the, the cross method. And the other one is like a box method, or we can do it with the smiley face method. So smiley face, that means the eyes, they're always cons uh, considered the uh, factor tree. So what we have here, it's a 6R squared. So the thing is that you want to think about the way to break it apart. So what I'd like to put in for 6R squared, I can put in 3R, 2R. So we try to get those two numbers as close as possible, 3R, 2R. And then negative 70, we can use negative 7, positive 10 or maybe negative 10, positive 7. But don't forget about the number here in the middle. So we need to satisfy the number in the middle, so it's got to be a big number. So in order to have a big number, so what I would like to put in for 6R squared, instead of using that 3R, 2R, because those two numbers, they're pretty close. So we want to make the extreme of those two numbers. So in order to get the extreme of those two numbers, so that means one of those numbers got to be the smallest, the other one would be the biggest. So then that would be 6R, and then 1R. And then for negative 70, so I can put it into negative 7 and positive 10. So by the time that you check the word, so you can always check the inner product. The inner product, it's about 1R times negative 7. So then that'll be negative 7R. And then the outer product, then that'll be 6R times 10, then that'll be 60R. Once you combine them, you'll find out that it's the exact same number that we have in the second term. So that means you're getting the right structure of the factor form. So now the last thing that you want to do, you want to put in all this together. So the way to pair the factors together, we want to put in the number and the variable on the left-hand side of the factor tree all together. So the one on the left-hand side, we do have 6R, negative 7. So let's put in that, all those elements together. So we got 6R minus 7. And now what about the rest of the parentheses here? So then that'll be the right-hand side of the factor tree. Then that'll be 1R plus 10. So R plus 10. So then that'll be the right factor form. So for the next one, we can come up with something similar to this. But before you do that, you want to take out the greatest common factor. 
it looks like that one is going to be considered negative 3. Because negative 30, 51, 18, they're all divisible by negative 3. So once you take out negative 3, we're number 72, uh, 74, excuse me. So we do have 10 a squared. And then minus, because you took out the negative, so that's why you need to convert a sign to its negative. So negative times positive, which is negative. So 51 divided by 3, then that would be considered 27. Well, let's see, that's too big. Uh, once you divide it, it's actually 17. Let's see. Sorry about that. I cannot do it mentally today, so I need to show the work. Yep, yeah, 17. So we got negative 17a, and then negative 18. So once you divide it by negative 3, so you got what? Positive 6. And now what about the rest of the trinomial here? Again, you can always follow through the smiley face method and try to factor the rest of this. So we got negative 17a right here. So this one, we need to break it apart. So for 10a squared, we can come up with 2a, 5a. And then 6, we can put it into negative 3 and negative 2. And let's see which way that would be the better approach. So let's put in negative 2 negative 3 or the other way around well I'll try to put in negative 2 then that'll be negative 10a and then the other one would be negative 16a but we need to come up with negative 17a so once you swap them so once you swap them it's going to be negative 3 negative 2 so neither one of those ways it's going to work out because that negative 17 is a prime number So what we can do, so basically we just leave that as negative 3 times the trinomial. Okay, so because the rest of the trinomial here, it's not factorable. Okay, so this one basically we just leave it like this. But wait, another way that we can factor this. No, that won't work. Okay, so let's check that, number 74. So the best way that we can just take out is the greatest common factor. You can always check the word down the bottom of the page right here. So it shows all the solutions. So the one I'm checking right now, number 74. And for that one, well, actually you can factor it. So 2a. 5a, oh, instead of using negative 2 and negative 3, we can use negative 1 and negative 6. So that one, there's so many, so there's so many possible outcomes, so you need to verify it. So it looks like I just used, what, negative 2, negative 3. So let me go back to that problem. Okay, so for this one here, so we took out negative 3. And we left with 10a squared minus 17a plus 6. So what we can do, we can use 2a, 5a, and then this one here, we can use negative 1, negative 6. Okay, so negative 1, negative 6. And then checking the word, okay, in the product, out of product, so we do have negative 5a, negative 12a. So once you combine them, then that'll be negative 17a. So again, put this all together. Don't forget about the greatest common factor. You need to carry along with that. So negative 3 times the quantity of 2a minus 1, and then times the quantity of 5a minus 6. Again, whatever the one that you have on the left-hand side of the factor tree, you want to group those things together. And the element that you have on the right-hand side of the factor tree, you want to group those elements together. That would be the factor form for number 74. And now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. Solving. So solve each equation by factoring. So the way to solve an equation, so first thing that you want to do, you want to line up the equation back to the standard form. The quadratic equation with the standard form is always written as ax squared plus bx plus c. 
So this one is called the standard form of a quadratic equation. As you can see that the power is from the greatest to the least. So we got n squared and then plus 6n and then plus 9. So just take everything from the right hand side to the left hand side. And then for the right hand side, we can just set that equal to 0. So now for the rest of this, what we can do, we can factor it. So once we factor it, so n, n, 9, we can use 3 and 3. So it looks like this one is going to be a perfect square trinomial. So it's the same factor, n plus 3, n plus 3. So once you solve for n, so we got n equals negative 3. And now you might be wondering, how many times is the same solution that appears since we do have the exact same solution? Uh, the same solution appear twice so that means the multiplicity multiplicity would be two multiplicity that means it's the number of times the same solution appear so since we do have negative three that appears twice so that means the multiplicity would be two okay so now let's see the rest of this so tomorrow we're going to spend more time to deal with the rest of the the packet here Again, any kind of problem that you're doing during asynchronous learning, you guys don't finish that, and I would like to finish that as part of the homework. And also tomorrow, we're going to continue with the rest of the packet here. Okay, so I'll see you guys on Thursday.